As you start using the device, lung returns will probably be more difficult to discern compared to heart returns. The low frequency and soft tone of the moving lung can be mistaken for the noise of the stethoscope face sliding across the skin. Bear in mind that Doppler returns from the lungs can only be detected with deep inspiration and expiration. This is the same as for a conventional stethoscope where significant air movement must be produced to generate audible lung sounds. If the patient is conscious and can obey commands, ask them to take deep breaths. It can also be useful to get them to hold their breath to reassure yourself that the sounds are coming from lung wall motion as opposed to movement of the device. Normal breath sounds with the Doppler mode have been described by clinicians as resembling a coarse friction rub or bronchial type breath sounds. It is important to understand the Doppler is directional and very location specific. This means that a certain amount of hunting is needed to find the best location and best orientation. If you are accustomed to listening to the apex of the heart through a regular stethoscope in a particular spot, you may have to move left and right along the intercostal space to find the best Doppler signal. It is actually useful to think of the stethoscope as a flashlight with a short beam focused about an inch or two ahead of the lens. In fact, the Doppler mode has a fairly small working volume ahead of the front face, kind of like a teardrop, and will only produce a workable return if that volume intersects a moving anatomical structure within the body. If that working volume meets a moving or vibrating surface, it will deliver a strong reflection, which is translated into clear, well-defined sounds in your headset. Position and orientation of the stethoscope's front face are therefore critical to receiving clear sounds.